All right. So the other important thing is what's called differential operators. The other, other important manipulation we can do is scalar vectors and tensors is uh, differentiating and integrating integrating them. And you might have seen some of those already, right? If I do uh, the gradient of a scalar, gradient of a scalar, that's a vector, right? This vector here, d phi dx1, phi dx2, d phi dx3. I should write like this, gradient of phi. I should just give its components, d phi, dx i. So we can provide it, uh, the scalar, the smooth function and differentiable function. We can define the gradient. We can also define the gradient of a vector and that's going to be a tensor a matrix with components t u i t x j And then the curl of vector is a vector. And best way to compute it is to think of it as the vector product of this operate of this vector here. But I'm saying vector, it's not really a vector. It's a we have a stretch to think of it a vector. It's a vectorial operator if you want. It's just a mnemotechnic, a mnemonic way to remember it. So you just want to write it like this. Otherwise, it's hard to remember the components of the curve. But now you can see it. That it's just going to be d u3 dx2 minus d u2 dx3. Then it's going to be minus d u3 dx1 plus d u1 dx3. And finally, it's going to be d u2 dx1 du1 dx so these are definitions uh, they will be used later in the course the gradient of a tensor the gradient of a, sorry the gradient of a scalar gradient of a vector the curl of a vector there's also the divergence of a vector. So one good way to think of it, if you don't remember, is to think of it as a dot product. But really, that's what it is. du1, dx1 is just the sum of these three terms. It's also the trace of the gradient of U, and that's a scalar. So you can see the, the gradient makes you go one order in the, in the tensor family, right? You go from, if you apply gradient to scalar, you go up to a vector. If you apply gradient to vector, you go up to a tensor, while the divergence goes the other way around. If you apply divergence to a vector, you go down to a scalar, if you apply divergence to
to a tensor, you will want to go down to a vector. And that's going to be a vector with the following uh, components. T A one one T X one T A two one T X two T A one two T X one T A two two T X two plus T A one not three, three two TX three TA one three TX one so it's to be hard to memorize this it's easier if you look at the components The, the if component of the divergence of i is going to be the sum of t a j i t x. Oh, sorry, I should have the sum on j. T x j. So you keep the second uh, index and you, you sum, you differentiate with respect to, the, oh, I don't know how to say it uh, formally, but that's the formula. And that's the convention we use in this course. Uh, you will find in some books, the convention is different. And I'm just gonna write it as a note in some books. The divergence is defined in a different way, and there's no right or wrong way. You just have to make a choice. And so sometimes you will find different formulas in the book, in a different book or in a different article. And that's because they've chosen this convention. As long as you're consistent and you stick with this rule, you're going to be OK. Of that rule, you're going to be okay as well. So in this course, we're going to stick with the, the rule I've given earlier, I've given above. Okay. So this concludes chapter one. Chapter two will be about uh, kinematics. Uh, we're going to use those notions to uh, to describe describe more describe deformation of, of soft materials uh, that's that's interesting we will just we'll just introduce uh ways to describe the deformation of a material like i told you you can deform in se in, three, in several dimensions in three dimensions and in several directions and so we we need to be able to 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 introduce we need to introduce a, a new new concepts and new objects that will help us do that. So we we'll design chapter two. Uh, that's just going to be a description of deformation. In chapter three, we're going to talk about forces and how you can apply forces to material. And then in chapter four, we we'll bring those two together and show how forces can create deformations and vice versa, right? Our forces and deformations are linked. And finally, in chapter five, we'll see how they are linked for real materials, how we can apply all those concepts to uh, experimental data. Okay.